thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing the Nigerian population. And remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish Africa One with the hashtag Wait. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Now, so, Devo, you know you, you're an analyst. Mm. So you have really reeled out all the numbers and we're excited about the numbers. But at the same time, we are scared. Because if you are telling me we have 120 able-bodied young people, then mm -hmm. there's a problem for me because it means that these numbers are not going to slow down. In, in fact, it's going to be, maybe even this analysis that they're saying by 2030 it will be 400 it million. Be it might even be triple. much more than that. Mm. All right, so um, we have some questions. Let me take some questions okay. and, you know, um, yay, Devo on the show. Somebody's excited. How do we address the issue of identification until that um, happens, Nigeria will, will continue to struggle to manage her resource. We truly don't know the scale of our problem. But I think Devo, you've been able to break down the scale of what we are up against. Mm. You know, so how do we manage or how do we handle, address the issue of identification? What do you think okay. would you I, I, I want to drop that a little later because okay. that's actually a solution to some of the issues. I just want to highlight some of the issues causing the population okay. boom, okay. Uh, which people should know. Because some people really wonder where do these numbers come from. Um, one, early marriage. Okay. Um, high birth rates, okay. Um, lack of family planning, all right. And then the entrenched cultural and religious factors, okay, yeah. which was why people uh, resisted when the legislation was being touted, okay. Now, and the major problem here is that with the baby boom explosion, we are growing faster at, at 3%. Mm -hmm. Our GDP growth is less than 2%. So we're growing faster that than we are developing. Yeah. So which means that we, can, we don't have the capacity to be able to manage these numbers. Mm. Now, um, what are the challenges that come with this? Um, uh, there's been an inability to legislate the, the policies that should actually help control to this, curb it, yes. to curb this, okay? It's a flashpoint. It's a cause for war in some places. Um, if you remember some months ago, a politician on news was displaying... How his many um, wives. How his many wives. And that speaks to polygamy. Mm. Polygamy is still a status symbol in Nigeria. Mm. Um, two, coming from the days of it being an industrial factor whereby having more children was to help the family. But in this yeah. day and age, uh, some people haven't left that. Two, our poor education... Education in Nigeria has literally collapsed. And um, with poor education, uh, what happens is within the larger population, that's where you now have the uh, early marriages. That's yeah. where you now have the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the, 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 the female is unable to say no. Hmm. She's unable to make a choice hmm. as to whether she gets pregnant or, or not. not. And Many people don't understand she this. She doesn't have her rights. She doesn't have her no. rights. Yeah. And that's why they said they would the look gender, at this day. Yeah. Two, um, with our education condition, you have about, out of um, 10 million applicants for university, only 2.6% or 26% were given enrollments. Uh, we have about 10 million children out of school. So you can see that the population is growing with enormous problems. Uh, two, you have the issue of with this uh, booming youth population, there are not enough jobs to, uh, to, cater, for to the, cater for all for of them. For all the ones that even yes. manage to graduate from the university. So with the growing unemployment, you now have um, all the issues that come with the migration. You just spoke of doctors who were uh, migrating, migrating elsewhere for greener pastures. Mm -hmm. You have um, those who are migrating in terms of education. This lack of control of our population has created um, numbers that drive medical tourism. That's because we don't have the medical infrastructure here. Nigerians are traveling outside to get health care. You also have um, the middle class migrating to places like the US, Canada, which is the latest fad. And then for those who don't have that capacity, you have the transatlantic and Sah Sahara journeys. Uh, you have the booming of the uh, human trafficking in terms of sex trafficking mm -hmm. um, and human trafficking on its own. Booming Libya, Italy, France. Um, you have the boom of deviance, cyber crimes, um, banditry, etc. Simply because we could not engage our I youth uh, in a proper manner. So, um, two, the problem is not so much that the economy is down. We do have an economy. Surprise! Many people wonder. We have money. We produce oil. So, so much oil. <laughs> we have uh, 
a very diversified economy. economy. Are you How, sure we have a diversified We do. We do. We do. However, sure? th there's a problem. The problem is the inequality mm. in the wealth distribution. 5%, 5 to 10% of Nigerians own 80% of the wealth of this country. Mm -hmm. So a few people. So out of 10 people, only one has the money. Eight are begging. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem lies. And this is stemming from the weak leadership, uh, um, weak institutions, corruption, etc. All these things that... And what it does is that it creates a more... Uh, complex situation. Complex and um, disempowered population, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is where the youth are most exp uh, affected because how can you have 120 million people that are energetic, that are strong? And yet they don't have and anything yet they're not that can engage them. And, and, and I feel for them because the truth is I always fight for the youth. Like I said, I came here sacrificially, but because <laughs> I stand for the youth, um, I, I, I never stand for anyone who says, oh, our youth are lazy or our youth, are, they don't have it right. You cannot point any finger at our youth. Our youth are our own children. Yeah. They are what we produced. Have you created an environment for them to mm. be able to thrive and say, you know, if maybe they did not thrive properly, you now say, okay, no, they are lazy. But we haven't created that proper environment for them. We have a question, though, okay. from Samiu Okonlawo. He says, we have to re-examine, or maybe a comment, we have to re-examine our population strength and then weigh that against the rate of productivity. I think that's what you were trying to say. Yes. A bulk of the population remains largely unproductive and that accounts for our um, abject poverty. We are huge in numbers. We are little in production. Pro that is unimpressive. That's from Samir um, Okolawo. Then yes. someone is saying in the UK... Can I say something? They're not productive because they themselves are unproductive. They're unproductive the because the, the environment does not enable it. The environment is hostile, to, to say. The environment is harsh. Hmm. Um, not just government. Our society has not built the infrastructure to be able to power the productivity that people are expecting. Yeah. Um, sorry, Uwa. Okay, yeah. um, another issue that I think we should bring to the fore is um, people have children as um, for social security. Yeah, of course. It's an old tradition, which Do you understand? should have been... People purposely have a lot of children as a kind of um, fortification for their old age. Their future. Yeah. Their future, because there's no social security for the aged even, in even Nigeria. outside of this, I have seen young girls getting married to older men you know, like maybe older men that have mm -hmm. many wives, you know, they deliberately have children for that man to secure their own okay. inheritance. Yes. Mm. So you see one person, one human being, mm -hmm. you know, having children. like 50 children, mm. you know, does that make sense? And you say you want to control I, the population. I, so those kind of legislations yes. can never come to the, it cannot, it can't even pass thing, the first reading. Another thing is a gender syndrome. You see a family have as much as 19 children Girls, and they because they want they're a looking boy. for a boy. Yes. Yeah. Th you know, those are all the cultural the challenges that we're yes. facing. But I wanted to bring out the fact that the youth are actually hardest hit in this population. And I want to say one, that every Nigerian is born a hustler, mm. meaning you're born in an environment that There's if you don't survive, to you yeah, so you have to take all these attempts, all these things you said are all means of survival. And with a in, a, in an environment where corruption seems to be culture, you start to have all these anomalies uh, where people, you know, marry in a bid to survive, yeah. not out of happiness and longevity. Yeah. Yeah. You have youths uh, rationalizing crime as a means of survival. Mm -hmm. All this stemming from a population that hasn't been properly Empowered. harnessed. Yeah. Um, merit has been completely eroded. eroded completely. So we literally justify, I mean, we're, we, we speak of hush puppy, right? And many say, oh, he's finally been caught. The truth is, many Nigerians looked at him as a hero. Mm -hmm. Because in our society, if we're truthful to ourselves, um, uh, deviance, crime, has become a you way know. of life. Let me, before I even, let me, let me jump ship to infrastructure. Many youths born after 2000 do not know what pipe warm water is. Mm -hmm. They've never seen it. Mm -hmm. They know water by pure the water. Boho or by borehole, mm -hmm. or by well. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what it means for the city infrastructure to, have a pipe to, to provide have a, yeah. water. It's house. not done. Mm. And these are the issues that we're facing with. Their dignity has been completely eroded because now they have to fight to get what they want, starting from child, um, trading on the streets, okay? Um, and they're to, in a huge number. Yes, many of them not finishing school. Yes. Um, to what we refer to as Ron's Girls mm. is just a... 
a, a part of society, skill. survival skill for on the female side. Mm. Men now move towards crime. Robbery. Two, yeah. even in terms of um, quality or improving themselves, uh, Nigerians are also well educated to some extent. However, those few proportions still undertake short practices and shortcuts simply to survive. Absolutely. Um, government positions, opportunities, etc. These are not happening. Now, solutions, because I know our yeah. time is yeah. far, <laughs> far spent. Yeah. It's not a doomsday story. It doesn't mean that our large population of over 120 million will not make it. However, the question is this, and the solution lies in the ability of you and me to be able to provide opportunity mm. for these teaming youth. That's where the solution lies. And when I'm speaking about opportunity, I'm referring to four levels. One, educational. Nigerians' large population needs to be educated. Yeah. And this education doesn't just speak to formal education. It also speaks to informal education. In this period where schools are not taking place, and for those who uh, you're not sure of where you will, how your children will skip to the next class, in this time and season, I recommend to parents to train their children in whichever way possible. Mm -hmm. You have one skill or the other that made you who you are. Take this time, since they're with Learned you at home, skill. if it's, if it's uh, how to make suya, teach them. Mm -hmm. If it's how to be a good plumber, teach mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. If it's how to um, whatever business, you vocation that you are in, yeah. take an hour whenever you find the time and teach your children. They life will, skills. these are life skills that they will never forget by the time you find a way around this. Yes. While the government is trying in one way or the other to sort out this educational conundrum. Two, employment. Um, employment is just a function of, of, uh, uh, of an enabling environment so that the private sector can grow. No government can do it all for their population. Mm. So anytime we speak of employment, 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 it's actually more of government providing an enabling environment for the private sector to, to expand yeah. and to explode, and which is why the entrepre entrepreneurial aspect of this teaming Nigerian youth yeah. needs to be encouraged. Leadership, yes. Um, they said when, during Obasanjo's first tenure that when he, he told some students that you will be the youth of tomorrow, and those youth grew up and Obasanjo was still <laughs> in government. <laughs> and even Buari, if you look at his pictures yeah. in his first tenure in the oh. 1980s, yeah. he's still in government. You must give the youth an opportunity to, to transit, to succeed. Um, it, it's a deliberate action, okay? If you don't, at the end of the day, they remain disempowered, okay? And then lastly, and I think which is the most important, if we ever had time to spend on this, fatherhood. Hmm. Remember, we spoke about the maternal side. Yeah. This population have largely grown unfathered. And let me break that down a bit. Because there are more women than men, okay? And because of the, uh, of the broken down society, the many, many families grow their children or raise their children improperly. These days, most parents are working. Mm -hmm. Children are left with the housemaids or the guardian, etc., and all the deviance that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, you won't know this until they're grown and you realize they have twisted forms of thinking. Yeah. Okay, to, to add to what you're going to say, mm -hmm. anyway, I was going to think that we we're going to talk about empowering women. Because yes. I know that if women are in employment, the, ten the tendency to have many children will be reduced. True. I think part of the problems we have is a lot of women are not empowered. Th these, are the, these are the deliberate efforts by government, okay, and let's say the private sector. For example, during the last administration, that was the JJ administration, uh, I think uh, Dim Patients, ensure that there was 30% gender. Representation, yes. female yeah. representation. It was not a wish. It was not a promise. It was a deliberate mandate. Yes. So this must be extended in the private sector, in the public sector. Everywhere. And in educational facilities, every female child yes. must go to state school. Governments need I mean to every have, child should state, go, state governments need to deliberately create opportunities for women mm. so that they can find themselves uh, uh, enabled in one form or the other. Now... Um, even with basic education, and that's what the global uh, entities are trying to do. You don't have to have a university education, but at least have primary. Yeah. But even now, I mean, look at the images of our primary schools, dilapidated, oh. with roofs raining through them. It's a sad story. It's a However, very sad story. We can make this change if we start to at least work within the community that we live in. The Nigerian population will not overrun us if we take heed or take care to ensure that we take some steps to actually 
address some of the issues. Okay, so we're running out of time. So let yes. me quickly take two comments. Um, Chisom says, hi guys, when will Nigeria know her exact population? Um, and any, uh, anyway, poverty, um, I think poverty, high level of Ill illiteracy, idleness and no resources all contribute to this problem. But how do we educate the populace in the rural areas that really need it the most? That's from Chisom. Then um, Adif in the UK says, good evening, ladies. How? Oh, okay. So he's saying that the problem is coming from the northern states. Um, they, they should be lectured on birth control. How can a man have 17 children from a woman? This, um, uh, this made news recently. The National Assembly couldn't approve the law against child abuse and molestation. The Almagiris are being sent to other re regions, claiming them to be, Niger to be Nigerians. This should not be allowed. That's from Ade in the UK. Mm -hmm. So um, what, do you, because we don't have so much time, but if you look at it now, we know that this population would definitely hit 400 million mark. Mm. If you were to give an advice to the government right now to put certain things in place, quickly, what would those things be? Okay, COVID exposed us. Yes. And with the exposure of COVID and, and exposed how poor we were, it exposed how we didn't have institutional uh, aids, infrastructure, social infrastructure, amenities, roads, food, um, hospitals, health, uh, ed education. School, yeah. COVID exposed this, okay? Now, it's an opportunity. We shouldn't waste this crisis. Many in the North took the opportunity, especially the governors, and abolished uh, Amadjuri, okay? Mm -hmm. um, whilst I can beat them up for that, that after the 100 years of trying to explain to them why they should have done that way before now, yeah. it took COVID to do that. Absolutely. So, um, the same way that they abolished Amadjuri's overnight is the same way and the same efforts they need to put in these population controls. Bite the bullet. It's a hard one. But bite the bullet and put some control measures regarding, one, contraceptives, mm -hmm. adoption of uh, female gender, uh, maternal uh, rights, yeah. okay? Two... Um, eradication of child marriage. Era well, I wouldn't Complete call it eradication, eradication, but there's a Child's Rights Act that's meant to be signed. Mm -hmm. They have made a move on that from the National Assembly. So they should but, just sign it. Uh, a no, few it's states, been signed. It's been no, it's been signed, signed by the National Assembly, but yeah. before it comes into law, you need two-thirds of the state's assemblies to pass it. No, what I mean is... Let me... No, let me, <laughs> no, let me just quickly mm -hmm. explain. Now, it's an act of the federal government. Yes. The states are at liberty to choose to follow the path. And no, they're not at liberty. No, no. I would explain that after okay. the show. Now we have about 24 states that mm -hmm. have signed in into law. Is so that two-thirds? You don't understand that. Okay. I would say right. that after the show. Go ahead quickly. <laughs> okay, so here. then the, um, um, like I said, they need to make deliberate actions. And it's not just the North, mm. nationwide, um, because it's a population boom across board. Mm. That move to control our population, both in terms of uh, the numbers, China did it knowing what would happen. Mm -hmm. If they didn't do it, um, I can imagine where what they would have, have been. Now. Yeah. So we have um, to be deliberate. To education, that's without the. If you can't get it on the legislative side, then Educate you need the to populace. empower education, build it, ensure mm -hmm. that it works, both private and public education. Mm -hmm. Because if, as they say, if they educate the girl child, we will educate reduce. The nation. <laughs> yes, we'll reduce the population by 3 billion by yeah. that 2050. Wow. We'll also, as they say, if you educate a woman, you empower the economy times three. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of hope and a lot of the future's grace lies in our ability to empower our women. So okay. hopefully, hopefully, we will get it right. <laughs> we have had a serious analyst <laughs> on our show this evening. Sorry, it's well, usually more you. fun than yeah. this. No, 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 no. But it, it's actually, it was good that we reeled out the numbers so that mm. people would see. This was not a show to come and make you feel good. Mm. It's to open our eyes to see the reality. This right. is where we're headed. Do we want to do the right thing or do we want to you know, stick to what, where we are? So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been an insightful conversation. Very, very, very detailed data. Now catch all our, all our previous episodes on YouTube as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Either we reduce the world's population voluntarily or nature, nature will, do will do this, this. for us. Um, but what? brutally. Totally. So you have to, you have to, we have to do it deliberately and we have to reduce our population. Thank you, Lamy. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.